Hey everybody, welcome to Complete Sports. We've got uh, some really great UFC talk on top here today. We're breaking down uh, 250 that just happened this past weekend. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, 249 that happened fairly recently as well. And then, boom, 251 has just been announced and uh, we're really quite excited. Wow, three, three title fights on the card. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Um, yeah, <laughs> Fight Island. So. We finally know where it is and what's happening. All the details are going to be broken down really soon. I'm going to be joined very soon with a uh, really good uh, guy that knows his uh, mixed martial arts, has spent a lot of time um, in fight disciplines over the years, and uh, him and I really like breaking down fights. He's a very knowledgeable guy, very funny. He's got a lot of great takes, and uh, we're going to join by Scott Holburn in a few minutes here. So. I'm uh, really, really looking forward to that, and uh, you will too. Uh, I guarantee that you're going to uh, love this opportunity to get a chance to hear him break down the fights. Um, yeah, we're uh, excited. 250 was a great, great card. Um, main event, uh, you know, it was, it was tough because it was a mismatch, but um, Amanda Nunes proved that she is the greatest female fighter to ever live and uh, in mixed martial arts in UFC, so... You know, it was great to uh, see another performance like that. Felicia Spencer, uh, you know, it, it, she's, she's tough and she's really, really game, but um, just not at the same level, unfortunately. Great to see uh, a Canadian um, get an opportunity to uh, go for a belt again. That was really cool. And, um, you know, the bantamweight division was uh, on display there after Henry Cejudo uh, stepped aside and uh, vacated the belt. Um, now suddenly everybody's moving moving parts and a lot of fights uh, started making that um, a little bit clearer and the, the picture a little bit uh, a little bit more clearer and 251 is going to have the belt um, being decided so um, yeah we'll, we'll see how that, that happens uh, or how that finishes and uh, see who's going to hold the belt um, yeah uh, glad you joined complete sports here um, you know the world of sports uh, was hit by the pandemic back in March and uh, obviously uh, it was tough having no live events. Uh, I've, I've been a lifelong sports fan and lover of sports and want to see sports, want to go to live events and, and uh, to suddenly have to go this many months without, it's been really, really hard on me and, and many people like yourself. Um, but uh, UFC really put to, has put together um, ways of, of going about it and uh, putting on events. So obviously those ones in Florida were great. And uh, then in Vegas this past weekend, and now Fight Island's coming up in July. So um, things to talk about, things to watch, things to love, things to break down. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to have Scott Holborn join us in, his, in a minute here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, 250 was uh, a phenomenal card. I, I enjoyed it top to bottom. Um, wow, great knockouts, good submissions, uh, you know, some dominance. And, uh, you know, things that you want out of a, a UFC card. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, we have broken this down a little bit with some people this week. And, uh, wow, there's a lot uh, on the plate with UFC. Obviously, they're going through a bit of a um, transition phase, trying to figure out how to do this without fans. Um, not bringing in as much revenue, but uh, hopefully the pay-per-view buys are, are way up. And with this one uh, um, coming up in July. 250, UFC 251 with three title fights should be huge, huge for ESPN and huge for the pay-per-view and for the fan like you and me. Uh, it'll be, it'll be really great to, uh, to to see three title fights on the same card like that. It's it, it's pretty rare. So um, yeah, and uh, 249. You know, we haven't been able to break that down uh, to you guys uh, as much. Uh, you know, I have a little bit of content where we talked about it, but. The things that um, you know were very surprising to me, obviously, was the um, Henry Cejudo retirement. Um, the other thing that was really fantastic was George St. Pierre getting uh, nominated to the Hall of Fame. Uh, something that you know I'm really, really excited. Justin Gaethje, um, you know, showed how amazing he's been able to evolve, and um, you know, really put a beating on uh, Tony Ferguson. And you know, it's hard to hard to fight Tony, uh, hard to fight Tony Ferguson, hard to dominate Tony Ferguson, uh, who's, you know, had a, a stellar last few years. And um, wow, you know, Tony is one of the toughest people to ever walk on the face of the planet. And, uh, you know, I don't think he's unfortunately ever going to be able to recover from 
fully recover from a, a fight like that because um yeah he took a lot of abuse and um you know it was it, i'm glad it was finally stopped it it should have been yeah because you know you don't want to see these guys uh take on permanent damage and you know it, that, that's never going to be a good thing but Justin Gaethje, wow, you know, very, very, very impressive. Uh, Henry Cejudo also, you know, wow, what a performance uh, by, by Henry and uh, being able to take the belt and then, uh, you know, walk away, vacate it. Um, you know, I, I have a feeling we're going to see him again. Um, you know, lots of these fighters, it's hard to walk away. And, you know, I get his gripe, you know, not, you know, not being paid as much as, some of the other um, higher weight classes and you know he should be he's uh, one of the best combat athletes to ever walk on the uh, face of the earth and um yeah i hope we don't lose him for good but if he does you know good for him you know it's being able to nice to walk away from the sport with having no no permanent damage and um you know going on and living a life and i think he's going to be successful on anything he does he's he's uh you know very talented very smart guy and you know i i, I you know, I really always hope these guys post career have fantastic lives and, you know, being able to find things that they love to do and, you know, be with their families and friends. And, you know, I, I applaud guys that can walk away like that. It's hard, but, um, you know, when they do, it's, it's, you know, it's great. You know, all, my hat's off to them. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm hoping you're liking our comment. Uh, please subscribe to complete sports, uh, complete sports media coverage has been, you know, a, uh, a company that I've been involved with for 25 years. And, uh, you know, I've been able to be around, go around the world and, and you know, um, cover fights and try to bring you content. Uh, we're going to have a lot of really, really great people joining us all the time. We're going to have former athletes, coaches, trainers. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people that are involved in the sport currently or have been in their future lives. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you'll love the content. Um, it's just going to just be coming fast and furious all the time. I'm going to try to do this as much as we can. And, and uh, we, you know, I love combat sports, but we're going to be talking a lot about basketball, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, golf, tennis, you know, lots of things. Um, you know, there's a lot of sports that I, um, I, I hope to bring some experts in that I, I'm not even all that uh, familiar with. I want to be um, some a, a sporting uh, destination for people to get their information. I would love to have, uh, you know, sports that, you know, are from around the world and, you know, attract, attract a crowd from so many different ways. So yeah, please, um, please uh, join in, subscribe to my channel, uh, find me on your podcast platforms and, uh, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tell the people that uh, you're close with, and uh, your coworkers, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, let's grow this thing. I really want to bring you amazing content. I'd love to let you know that uh, hey, we've got people that you want to hear from. You want to hear break down their um, their particular sport. And uh, you know, guys like today, uh, Scott Holburn. He's uh, he's a fantastic guy to speak with. Uh, I think you're gonna love him. I'm gonna try to have him on uh, on a recurring basis. Break down um, UFC fights and. Uh, be able to um, talk about, uh, you know, so much of the combat world. Um, that's his biggest love. I know he, he follows some other sports, but just not the same. And, uh, you know, I, I think his expertise in the MMA world is, is really fun and really, really fantastic to, to be around. So, you know, um, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's hope he, um, <laughs> yeah, let's hope, you know, he's able to give me that time and uh, come quite frequently and be a recurring guest. Uh, you know, you're going to love it. Uh, I always do. Every time we get a chance to talk, he, he's, um, he's a lot of fun, uh, makes me laugh. And uh, wow, he, he can see it from uh, a different perspective than I can. He, he sees things that I don't always notice and see. And he, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's a very smart guy, very, very, very knowledgeable on, on the fight game. So, yeah, so we're, we're waiting for him. Uh, it should be any minute here. Uh, we're going to have him. Um, you know, the um, fighting rankings just came out uh, on Monday and uh, lots of movement in that bantamweight division. Um, you know, from, from 249, there was uh, three, four fights on the bantamweight, uh, from the bantamweight division. So it really, really, really started um, shedding a light on who's gonna, who's, a, who's contenders and who's pretenders. Um, Al Jermaine Sterling was phenomenal. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, Sean O'Malley, Cody Stamen, 
Um, you know, now we're we're looking at uh, pitcher Yan and uh, Jose Aldo uh, trying to get the belt. Uh, so you know that division's been super exciting this past week and and uh, going on into the future into July. So um, yeah, let's uh, yeah let's let's get this going on. I think um, Scott's going to be joining us uh, momentarily. So let's uh, let's try to. Dial him in. Hang on uh, half a second for him. Hey there. Hey, we go. <laughs> perfect. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, How are you doing? Yeah, doing really well. Yeah, really well. I, uh, I've, I've been joined here by Scott Holburn. He's going to break down some uh, USC for us, as I mentioned a little earlier. Um, Scott. Uh, uh, has spent a lot of years in combat sports as a competitor, um, you know, as a guy that, uh, you know, likes to, you know, utilize it to keep himself healthy and in shape and keeping the uh, aggression down and you know, uh, really wants to be, uh, you know, um, trumpeting the uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, he does jujitsu now, has uh, done judo and many other uh, disciplines over the years uh, he's really great at breaking down fights uh, you know he he has an eye that uh, I really really appreciate he, he can notice a lot of things that I don't notice and others don't notice and he also brings a lot of humor and and great things to the table I'm hoping uh, he joins us today and then we can you know bring him on as a recurring guest all the time uh, thanks a lot Scott Holmburn to Complete Sports thanks for joining us thanks very much for having me I appreciate it How's, uh, how's things going? I know this pandemic has uh, kept you close to home. Uh, how's, uh, how's, how are things? How's the health of the family and everything? Family's good. Family's good. Definitely uh, it's a change, change of scenery from being out of the house most, most of the day, you know, working, working long hours and then heading to the gym in the night to, to a dead stop. So it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge that way, but uh, you know, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm actually uh, eating a lot better. I'm actually dropped to 145 for the first Whoa. time in my life. So, you know, I'm down to a bantam weight right now. So I could probably <laughs> cut, I could probably cut down to a, uh, to a uh, fly weight, you know, at this point, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's great. Good for you. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned bantam weight. Uh, I think we're going to talk a lot about bantam weight. Uh, just, you know, so many great fights on this last card, uh, you know, after, 249 and uh, Henry Cejudo being able to you know show his dominance and then decide to you know vacate the belt and walk away and retire. Um, all of a sudden, this uh, division opened up and uh, man, so many storylines just happened over this past weekend. 250, um, you know, Nunez and Felicia Spencer was the main event, but you know the, the fights that I was just loving the most were this bantamweight. Uh, you know, seeing Cody Garbrandt. Uh, you know, come back after three fight losing streak. Aljamain Sterling, amazing submission. Uh, Sean O'Malley, Cody Stamen, you know, huge wins. Uh, you know, tell me about your thoughts and and you know, out of those fights on the card, bantamweight uh, really looking great right now. Oh, the bantamweight division is stacked. I mean, there it's it's just a murderer's row there with all those guys. I mean, if you can just look at like O'Malley, how he manhandled Wineland. Uh, I mean, there is no lack of depth in that division. I'm a little disappointed, though, to be honest with you, that Jose Aldo's getting the uh, title shot right off the bat. I mean, he last fought uh, Marlon Moraes and lost. And that was his, that was his bantamweight uh, debut. So, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's hard to say what's going on right now because of the, the whole pandemic thing. It's hard to know if fighter availability or if fighter's willing to fight. But, you know, uh, to me, you know, Cody Garbrandt looks so good, so good that that he definitely deserves a shot as as uh, Aljamain Sterling. I mean, both those guys could easily step in, and and Marlon Moraes. I mean, he's I mean he still he looks like he wants to fight. I don't know what happened with uh, him fighting Peter Yan, but he's now called out uh, Dominic Cruz. So there's a uh, there's there's a lot going on in that division. One of the best divisions in in the sport right now for sure. Yeah, well, has it ever been? Um, yeah, my thoughts on the Marais and Aldo. I, you know, I personally actually thought Aldo won that fight. Um, you know, I, I, I had him winning it. Um, they, they gave it to Marais, but uh, you know, wow, Aldo. You know, I know it was his first fight, and you know, he's probably getting this title shot from past, and you know, being such an amazing champion for so many years. 
you know, um, as you said, who knows how these contract negotiations are working. Sometimes even when a fighter wins, he still gets a suspension because he's got a broken hand or, you know, some, some kind of medical problem. So I don't know how Marais is feeling, but yeah, it's great that he made a call out and he wants to, you know, fight another big competitor in the division. But, uh, you know, now we, uh, we just heard yesterday that 251 is going to actually um, hand off the belt for that division. And uh, Peter Yan, um, you know, he, he's had an amazing run. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know if Aldo still has it. We'll see. But, uh, you know, uh, at, least, at least somebody will hold the belt. And then these all these contenders that, uh, you know, had amazing performances this past, this past week. You know, they'll have a shot, shot at it soon. Uh, I mean, Peter Yan, for me, is the guy to beat in that division. I mean, he is, he is lethal. I mean, he is, and he's a guy that just doesn't look like you can, you know, you could, you could stop him. I mean, he just <laughs> looks like a man, like a machine in there every time he fights. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight for sure. Yeah. And uh, Jose Aldo, I mean, I just don't know how, it's hard to know how the weight cut's going to affect him, you know, because he's, he's not a small guy. So, no. you know, even at 145, he probably had a cut, you know, 10 to 15 pounds. So, I mean, down to, to 135, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how, we'll see how he does. But uh, Peter Yan for me is, that guy is awesome. He is. Yeah. He's impressive. He's uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was just seeing Garbrandt, uh, you know, be able to push that losing streak away. Um, you know, one of the most spectacular knockouts that I've ever been a witness to, uh, to be able to, you know, bend down and pretty much touch your toes and, and be able to, you know, throw that, that punch and it, it to be right at the buzzer, you know, it was a walk-off buzzer beater. You know, you don't hear that in this sport very often. Um, you know, Mark hunted him. Um, it, was a, yeah. it was a hell of a knockout. It, it was unbelievable, and he's so fast. I mean, if you watch the replay of that, he didn't even need to take a step forward with with his with his uh, I think he's a with his uh, with his right leg in order yeah. to get more power. I mean, he just ducked and swung, and he's got to be the fastest the fastest puncher in that division for sure. I mean, he's hard to hit, and when he hits guys, that they they feel it. It was good moving to that camp. Obviously, uh, Mark Henry uh, brought a lot you know, to the game for him. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, when, uh, DC and Joe Rogan were talking about Mark Henry, it was just nothing but praise and, and, uh, you know, good to see him shake things up. Obviously he's still part of Al team alpha male, but you know, when you go on a three fight losing streak, you got to do something different. And, and, you know, the patience that he showed is not something that Cody Garbrandt's ever been known for. He just gets into firefights, gets into a phone booth and just, you know, throws it, throws down with guys. And, you know, he finally realized, hey, you know, let's fight smart. And, uh, you know, it, it showed it. What a performance. Yeah, I mean, the way he 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 controlled the the fight with his calf kick, and that's something that right off the, the top, he showed his dominance in that and, you know, was uh, avoiding a sense that was, you know, kicks and was checking kicks well. And he just developed, you know, almost like a, like a pattern where he was just, you know, taking out his uh, sense of uh, uh, calf and, and op that opened up the, it you know, slowed him down. It was just opened up for the big, the big headshot. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to talk a little more on those calf kicks. Uh, Henry Cejudo uh, was, you know, he was able to do that with Dominic Cruz and it was a, an amazing, amazing performance, but I don't want to leave 250 yet. I, I do want to talk about, uh, Aljamain Sterling, I want to talk about Sean O'Malley, and then I want to talk about Cejudo. I think Cejudo's brought that calf kick into the game and made people realize that you can break down a almost anybody with, with being able to get rid of that front leg. They can't put any pressure on. They, they can't do the takedowns anymore, that kind of thing. But let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about the other KO that, that blew me away was O'Malley. Wow, like Wyland <laughs> has never uh, had that happen to him. And, uh, you know, O'Malley's such a a small lanky guy and uh you know i couldn't believe the power he generated well you know it's funny because i think actually maybe you and i were actually texting at that time and i actually was, i actually said you know wyland's got to keep his hands up especially the guy who's got that much length i didn't know o'malley had that kind of power though but he looked big i mean he looked 
huge compared compared to Wineland in that. And so it looks like he's put on some weight. He's matured a lot. Yeah. He, uh, you know, wasn't trying to be too, too flashy. So I think that kid, you know, I, I wasn't sure at first, but after seeing that, I mean, that kid's the real deal. If he can keep calm and, and, and ease up on the, the flash and dash a bit, that he, he'll, he'll, he'll be a force to reckon with in that yeah. division for sure. I know you don't like him, but, uh, you know, I, hey, what, whatever, I gained, who I, cares? <laughs> I gained a lot of respect for him in that one. I, I actually kind of thought that, uh, you know, Wineland – wouldn't have been nearly as reckless and, and pushing forward as much as he was with his hands down, but, uh, man, what, what, what a knockout. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You learned a lesson. Uh, I think he'll uh, listen to his coaches when they say hands up from now on for sure. Uh, he, but, but a guy after uh, your own heart, the guy that's, uh, you know, really impressed me, uh, ranked number two on the Bantamweight list, Aljamain Sterling. Holy cow. Like, Cody Sanhagen just didn't really even have a chance to do anything. It was just Aljamain was on him, got his back, and just, you know, he, he had that first transition, uh, couldn't get him, had to move him to the other side, and then put on the choke. And before Sanhagen could even choke, he was already sleeping. It was like, wow, holy cow, there it went. Yeah, I mean, that's just it. That's one thing that's exciting about the bandweight division is the speed the guys move at. I mean, and they have, you know, not only do they have power to knock guys out, but you can see how fast Jimmy, Aljamain Sterling took – took Cody's back and got him to the ground and the rear naked choke was in even before, before they even hit the ground essentially. And I actually thought at first it was just around his chin, but he, he had a deep and, and he, and he put him out pretty quick, but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it's every, every fight, every, I see, it just seems like more and more clear that, uh, it's, it's a jujitsu or a uh, Muay Thai are the two kind of, sports are kind of really really dominating i mean yeah. you know the muay thai with those those leg kicks uh, you know that's that's even how arguably connor arguably connor beat uh, uh diaz in his second fight because he worked you know the, the front lead leg and yeah. it's it's a it's a good tactic to have because it slows everybody down and yeah the guy that uh the, the guy that i can think of that i remember really doing it back in the day was benson henderson and i always thought like he had such power, he had such amazing calf, uh, amazing quads, and and you know those calf kicks, you know, just took out that lead leg, and it, and it just it just diminishes a guy so fast, and and uh, to be able to see it start evolving into the sport, and you know being able to really help guys take on these monsters and be able to, to defeat them, it's great, you know. Uh, Dominic Cruz, you know, he was a mystery for so many guys, uh, you know, really really tough guy to to uh, ever figure out and hit, you know, he was just always able to move so well, but you know, a few of those calf kicks, boom, you know, that, that, that mobility goes down and you know, it, it, it can take a huge weapon away from a guy. So. I would have liked to have seen uh, Dominic, you know, back uh, with another warm up fight before getting into that fight with Cejudo. I mean, he just didn't, he didn't look like the Dominic Cruz of old in there, but you know, it's, it's hard to say. I don't know. Uh, he, he, he complained pretty hard that that, fight was called pretty early but i mean cejudo was controlling that fight up until that point anyways so. oh yeah yeah hard, hard to say yeah very hard to say but um tell me about uh your thoughts on cejudo retiring um uh, you know i was disappointed i mean he's even been able to accomplish so much uh you know that was um uh you know amazing you know he's been able to beat the top guys in the division and really clear out you know a couple of divisions and being able to you know show some dominance and then to, to retire I don't think he's gonna stay retired but uh, you know it was quite a shock to me yeah I mean there's a lot of guys in in, in that 135 division that he he, need, he needs to fight to really say he's 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 the best you know right. but uh, I mean like I said that that is a deep deep division yeah he beat TJ he beat uh, Dominic but and th there's a lot of there's a that 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 division is pretty deep to sort of say to call himself the greatest of all time but uh you know yeah you know, he, yeah I he's mean, uh, yeah i mean i i think he even knows he's being ridiculous when he's saying a lot of the things he's saying you know I but mean, uh, you, you look know, at a guy like a guy like john jones i mean that guy has cleared out the 205 division and and, and true, that guy true. can clearly say you know and, and anderson when he was in his prime you know they he fought everybody yeah. he uh you know, I think Cejudo fighting TJ and, and then fighting a, a guy who's been pretty much retired for the last few years to come back and then say he's the best. I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, I, know I guess mean. I think I think I Cody Garbrandt would have something to say about that. <laughs> of course, <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, I, I did want to, uh, you know, touch just a little bit more on um, yeah, Cody Stamen. Obviously, that was uh, tragic. His his brother dying. Um, I, I don't think I heard reason why, but uh, wow, uh, you know, I even saw tears in DC's eyes, and I think Joe Rogan's eyes over it uh you know wow we saw that you know we saw that with um you know a guy recently fought over him and uh, harrison and uh, all of a sudden this happens again uh you know these guys uh, you know they're, they're dealing with a lot in their lives with this pandemic we're all dealing with a lot of stuff but man imagine having to you know go into the cage and train for a fight with uh you know, a family member dying like that wow uh you know amazing performance uh, I, I was pretty impressed yeah, and I mean, and he beat a guy who was on who was on a a real run with Brian Kelleher. I mean, you know, you know, Kelleher is no slouch. So Stamen had to really dig deep to to come up with that that victory, and it's an amazing story. And you know, it's it's just it's just it martial arts. Martial arts is like I like I you know I've you heard me call it violent meditation. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's something that. Uh, it's probably, I mean, it might just be what he needed. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. True enough. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, I, I, I did really want to touch a little bit more on uh, 249. You and I didn't get to break it down like this. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I really love that card. Um, Justin Gaethje, wow. Like, you know, that was as flawless of a performance in a title fight that I remember seeing in a while. Um, you know, his punches were just amazingly accurate. So crisp, um, you know, I just I couldn't believe Tony Ferguson being dominated like that. Uh, you know, I, I, T Ferguson was on such a massive long winning streak, and and uh, you know I couldn't believe the punishment that he took. He, that guy's one tough son of a bitch. And holy cow, that was a crazy fight. You know, it's funny. I actually uh, a good friend of ours, you know, Mike Church, and I always bet on uh, on fights, and I and I took Gaethje in that one. So uh, I I thought that was the probably the worst matchup that Tony Ferguson could have taken because he went from fighting, you know, training to fight a complete wrestler, you know, working probably he probably was working on uh, defending himself off his back and training like that for most of his camp yeah. to fighting an all-out striker. Um, yeah, I mean, Ga Gaethje again. I mean, he he fought the perfect plan. He didn't he didn't rush in. He didn't you know swing carelessly and and it. But yeah, take nothing away from Gaethje. That was a, an amazing performance. And I just wonder how uh, how much doing two weight cuts uh, in in a month affected Tony Ferguson. Oh yeah, it had to have. Yeah, and and something that you mentioned to me around that fight time was that uh, Eddie Bravo was there telling him to you know. You know, <laughs> an Imanari role. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I was like, "What are you doing? What's going on? This is a stand-up war here. Like, you know, get 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 my striking coach in here. Like, holy shit, what the hell?" Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, hey, Eddie Bravo knows his stuff. He's been around a long time, but uh, yeah, it just, I don't know. I mean, after the third round, I mean. I, Ferguson just did, they just they didn't have a plan I mean and when you go in that I think it was between the third and fourth when he said oh maybe let's try an Imanari role I mean that's you know I don't know yeah. if it's something you want to do when you're uh <laughs> you're tired and beat up and uh you know it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I getcha I know, okay. yeah you know Eddie Bravo knows the stuff don't get me wrong but uh <laughs> you know yeah, well, you know, it's it's, it's not been, the highest percentage nice. uh, move. <laughs> no, I feel t I feel really sorry for Ferguson because you know, I mean, he tried fighting five times for um, Khabib, and you know, like you say, you know, you're training for a completely different fighter. You know, you know, some of the people that might not know how hard that is, like, holy cow, that is difficult because Khabib is one of the best takedown artists in, in on the planet, and. When he takes you down, he just grounds and pounds you and, you know, mashes you into the mat. And and all of a sudden, you know, he has to switch gears and go to a completely different guy. It's 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 very, very challenging. Wow. It's amazing. You got to remember, like you said, this is the fourth or fifth time they try to make that fight. So, you know, Tony Ferguson has been training for Khabib Nurmagomedov like, for a really long time. You know, <laughs> like, that's been his focus for the last, like, three years. I mean... Yeah. 
So, okay. to, you know, you can't take anything away from, from Tony Ferguson. Don't He's awesome. No. And, and he'll, he'll be back. I mean, that guy is, that guy is awesome. I hope so. I mean, the abuse he took, I don't know. I don't know if you'll <laughs> ever be quite the same. It's, uh, it's, that has to take a toll on you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 this is this is something else too. I mean, and you could also say the same about the the Nunes the fight. I mean, I think corners have to start throwing the towel a bit more. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. Tony Ferguson took a lot of abuse, and oh, yeah. uh, he probably shouldn't have gone out there in that last round. And the same thing with the the, the Nunes fight. This Lisa last Spencer, yeah. was Lisa, Lisa Spencer, Spencer I mean, is, is a tough girl. Uh, she's not on the same level, you know, um, you know, there's just, there's just, you know, world class and then there's, you know, notch above and, you know, she, Nunes is the best, best of all time, you know, to be able to, you know, beat Cyborg, beat Rousey, beat, you know, all these killers that came in to face her and, you know, it's just, it was, it was not a, it was a, a mismatch and, you know, I felt, I felt sorry for Felicia, who's a great fighter, but just, you know, doesn't have the skill set that Nunes does. No, and, and the speed difference was was uh, unbelievable. I mean, it just it, that that honestly that fight almost makes you think it shouldn't have happened. But yeah. the thing is, who else is there at, at one forty five in the uh, in, in the women's division? I mean, there's uh, Holly Holm, who's already fought Nunez. Uh, Jermaine Duramedy has already fought Nunez. Yeah, no, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, you know that low, the, that high level of competition is just really not there for her, and you know. She's going to step away, I think, for a while. She's, she's going to have a kid and, you know, focus on her family and, you know, relish being a two-time champ or, or two-belt champion, uh, two-weight division champ. And, and uh, you know, let's see all these other girls battle and, you know, see who can finally get a shot. It's going to take a, a while, I think, for her to get beat. And uh, we'll see. I, I hope she has a layoff. And I hope we can finally see some contenders rising up the ranks to, you know, we, we see a good battle like, cyborg and you know you know stuff like that that's really exciting and you know a lot, lot more of, i don't i don't want to see mismatches like that it's not it's not fair it's not good it's uh you no. know especially a main event you know you don't want to see somebody that's that much better and you know somebody that's you know really risking their life uh, out there uh you know she wasn't on the same she's not on the same plane as her not a chance yeah let's let's touch base a little bit on uh on the 251 card, I guess you you've seen a little bit. I, I you know I um, told you uh, let's let's look at it a little bit. Um, you know three three title fights on the card. That's pretty impressive and pretty great. Uh, you know Fight Island. We finally find out where it is, and uh, you know kind of uh, going to be a quarantine ten mile quarantine zone, so should be safe. Going to have four four cards there in July, but uh, the one to break down for me right now is 251 and. Um, you know, the, the main event is, is where I'd like to start. Uh, Kamara Usman, you know, amazing champ and, you know, phenomenal fighter. Uh, I'm, I'm worried for him with Burns though. Holy cow. Burns just dominated Woodley. Um, you know, so did Usman, but, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, Burns is looking like a, a scary monster coming for that belt. So what do you, what do you think? How's that going to turn out? Well, I think I think that's the right fight to make. I think Gilbert Burns deserves the shot. I know a lot of people are calling for uh, Jorge Masvidal to get the shot, but I mean, you know, Masvidal, you know, he's won his last three in a row, but you know, he did beat uh, Till and he beat uh, with his flying knee oh, on, uh, oh, on Ben yeah. Ask on Ben Askren. Yeah, that was hilarious. And, uh, yeah. Um, so the curly so everybody, idiot. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's the hot ticket the, the hot ticket attraction right now, but I think yeah. Gilbert Burns really is 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 the guy who deserves the title shot. I mean, since coming back to, uh, to the 170 division, he's beaten uh, Gunnar Nelson, Damian Maya, oh. Tyron Woodley. I mean, he, yeah. he's next in line for that title shot. And Usman, I mean, Usman, Usman's a beast. He's a, he's, he's a different talent. So, yeah. you know, Gilbert Burns doesn't have a huge turnaround from his last fight to this next one. So we'll see how that, that plays out. But uh that that's 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 going to be a, a, a good fight. Oh man, is it ever? Yeah, I'm I'm super excited for it, and you know it's, um, yeah, I think it's going to be. I, I'm glad it's you know it's coming soon, and I'm glad it's the main event. And yeah, no, I think it. You're right. Um, Masvidal, you know, uh, yeah, he's he's on a really good streak, and uh, you know, he deserves some big fight. But I I think him and Connor, you know, I I think they should. 
pull it off. Connor did, did the, you know, I'm retiring a game thing and, you know, tried to upstage 249 uh, or 250, whatever. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, this, uh, you know, uh, retired for the third time, but you know, it's it, both Masvidal and him are talking about money and, you know, McGregor brings a ton of money into every pay-per-view that he's a part of. And, uh, you know, Masvidal, I know Masvidal said, hey, why should I get paid less to have a, a title fight than, you know, when I fought Diaz, you know, uh, with, with with this BMF made-up belt? Uh, you know, that, that makes sense to me that he said that. But, but you know, if, if they can put him against McGregor, uh, McGregor says, sure, uh, wow, they're going to they're gonna make money off of that. Yeah, they will. They'll make money off that for sure. And again, I don't envy Dana White and all the guys have to do these contract negotiations. But uh, but uh, I'm excited though for to see Burns and Usman for sure. I mean, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, it. I heard, I heard Dana White say that uh, Masvidal just signed a huge long contract just recently. Uh, so did Jones. I think uh, I, I think he said something crazy like a seven fight deal and a nine fight deal for those guys. And you know, so he's like. You know, now they're coming and wanting to renegotiate. We just signed it, and they were happy when we signed it. And all of a sudden, you know, one fight later, or you know, a few months later, pandemic happens, and you know, now now they want to renegotiate. That's not really the good business practice for me. But you know, it it's always you know, there's always this kind of stuff in behind the scenes. And you know, now a few of the guys are coming out saying, "Hey, I'm not happy," but um, you know, they'll figure it out, I'm sure. And you know, I hope I hope they can make that fight. I, I, I would be excited about Masvidal and McGregor. I think that would be a great one. Oh, absolutely. I mean, anytime those guys get on the cards, you know, it's always, it's always a bit of a, a circus show and you never know what to expect, but yeah, I mean, they're both awesome, talented, exciting fighters. Let's so break it, down, let's break down uh, the other uh, um, belt uh, up for grabs on that card. Uh, we already did talk about all day in the end, but let's talk about uh, Max Holloway Volkanovsky uh, too. Um, does Holloway have a chance to reclaim it? And uh, can do you think he, he can figure out a way to beat him? Uh, you know, that, that that's a tough one. I mean, there those are two. I mean, Holloway is such a good fighter. I mean, he's mm-hmm. one of the best. Um, you know, I just – I think that the, the weight cuts for him are a big issue. I think he needs to, to, to move up to, to 155. Mm-hmm. And we'll, it, we'll see how – We'll see how he performs in this one, um, but I think 155 is probably where it, where his future is. And Volkanovski is just so powerful and yeah. so fast. And again, the leg kicks, the leg kicks in that fight. You know, Volkanovski, you know, instilled his will on 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 uh, Holloway's legs. And uh, you know, Volkanovski, I think, is a guy who could who could uh, reign for a long time. You know. Uh, you know me. I still have um, you know Ortega as the wild card in that in that division. Also, you know, and a good yeah. jujitsu guy. You know, okay. but uh, Volkanovski Holloway. I think I think Volkanovski is gonna is gonna do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. I I tend to agree with you. Uh, you know, I I feel like he he was able to you know break Holloway down and figure out how to beat him. Holloway had been you know pretty amazing for a long stretch there and. Uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe you know the the tide has turned and we got a new a champ that's going to take off for a while. But I'm glad always getting a chance. I, maybe it's a little too soon, but uh, you know, we'll see uh, see how he changes his his style and his tactics, and you know, see if he can figure out how to beat Volkanovski. Uh, he's beat a lot of amazing fighters in his career, and you know, I'm I'm sure he's going to give him a huge battle. So uh, you know. To, to have three three fights three title fights in that card uh, i'm super excited i can't wait i wish i wish it was tomorrow yeah i mean and even the other fighters on that that card that jessica andrage versus rose Namanunas, and that's a good rematch as well that should be pretty interesting and uh yeah the card's shaping out to be pretty good yeah edgar munoz and we got uh van zandt fighting on that card and ozdemir and yeah i mean uh yeah, I'm glad the UFC is stacking cards and, you know, making people, um, yeah, get, giving a lot of people things to talk about and enjoy like us. Um, you know, it's been tough for me, this pandemic. Uh, I'm a I'm a sports lover. I love you know, so many sports and, you know, to all of a sudden just have nothing and, you know, trying to watch, you know, games from the 80s and the 90s and, you know, on and on and all this stuff is just like depressing and, you know, to be able to, 
see the UFC pull these cards together when they went to Florida and then they, you know, just had Vegas and now be able to go to Abu Dhabi. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, so it's enriched my life and made me happy. And you know, now we can finally do stuff like this where we can break it down. Yeah. I mean, someone had to be the, had, had to make the first step and the UFC, I mean, they didn't even want to stop. I mean, to be honest, but I mean, I think, yeah, I think they've done, they've done it right. And, yeah. and uh you know they were the first to st start up and then you can see the nhl now is starting to, to try to put put together some games and you know it, it just takes it takes one to kind of break to break the, the door open and uh, ufc definitely did that so you know for all sports lovers there you know it's funny because we talk about how you went how you we went from having nothing to watch in terms of sporting events and that first ufc fight back it, it made you feel human again you know what i mean like we, after uh after seeing all this uh negativity that's going on in the world right now it was it was it, it was much needed so i'm really really happy about that you um you sent me some pictures of um uh, uh some gloves and some uh things that you're going to put together and uh do a little training did you did you find a, a mat to roll on in your garage and your backyard <laughs> uh what uh, what have you been doing to get people, uh, during this whole thing yeah, I mean, keeping in shape here, it's been it's been tough. You know, I've been you know doing some weights and and running and stuff, trying to keep my uh, cardio up and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, my gym's open has opened back up, but I mean, they're you know you, you have to maintain six feet, and you know they they bought like wrestling dummies and stuff like that. I just I'm not I for me I'm gonna wait till we can actually go back and and uh, <laughs> and, and actually have like proper rolling and stuff like that you know so i think you know i think i might get a heavy bag and work on my striking a bit you know but uh you know right now i just got my i've got my focus mitts and my kick shield and i'm helping my son figure that stuff out but uh yeah what, what, it'll, it'll be nice way, to get back to it what weight divisions are you gonna son, son gonna fight in uh is it gonna be bantamweight you said 145 you got to uh, is it gonna be similar uh size as you or is he no i think i think he's gonna be i think he's gonna be a bit bigger than me he's probably gonna be a <laughs> you know 170 kind of kind of kid he, he's you know he's he's a big kid so nice is he uh is he liking the training or is he uh is he easy to to teach and to yeah i mean you know he's, he, yeah i mean he he's definitely not uh he doesn't have that killer instinct you know but my my youngest daughter though man she's he walks by and she'll like reach around and grab him by the legs and take him down and stuff like that so yeah, it's she. I think uh, she might be the the uh, mixed martial artist as well. But yeah, he loves it. I mean, nice. it, it's just it's just too bad that it's just not happening right now for anybody. But so is your uh, wife gonna let your daughter? Uh, you put your daughter into it as well. Or are you gonna have uh, two two fighters to uh, you know finally make you retire with a good income? <laughs> well. I don't know about that, but yeah, I definitely think that uh, my youngest is going to do jujitsu. Ju jujitsu, I think it's 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 great. For, I think it's great for anybody. Anyone who hasn't tried it, they definitely should try it. And you know, it's yeah. it's it's a great self defense, especially for women. Tell me the name of your gym. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely going to have um, you know your your head guy there on. You know, I I really love to have him on a podcast and talk. But uh, yeah, tell me the name of your gym and uh, yeah. Well, a bit for well, him. I'm 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 training at a West End martial arts and Jeff Mazaros is the, uh, the resident black belt jujitsu guy there. And he's, you know, also a jujitsu, uh, he's an instructor, he's fought around the world and trained in Brazil and he's, yeah, he'd be a good guy to have come out here, you know, and, uh, talk to, he's pretty funny and he knows, I mean, he knows from UFC one to UFC 251, he, he'll know, he'll know every, every stat there is. So. Yeah, that's great. No, I love, I love chatting with him. I love when he joins us when we go get together for pay per views, and um, you know he he's uh, you know he's been in the game obviously his his life, and you know it's he's he's he adds a lot of humor to it as well as uh, you know a, a, a major knowledgeable eye, and yeah, I I can't wait to have him. Uh, and you know let's let's promote his gym as much as we can. Let's uh, let's get a lot of guys in there that can roll with you guys, and uh, you know help you get keep in shape and get better in shape and. Yeah, and uh, maybe maybe we'll see somebody come out of that gym that's a fantastic one day that, uh, you know, we can all follow. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, they're, they've got a good uh, kickboxing group, too, there with uh, with Blake and Dean Lorette, too, and they are both talented 
talented fighters also. So, yeah, I mean, just a matter of time. Yeah. One of the guys we get together with uh, here and there is uh, Dennis Kang. Uh, when he's in town, he lives uh, actually over on North Shore as well. And uh, I saw him um, working with Amanda Nunes, uh, you know, in the last while. Um, you know, I saw him on the Mandela commercial. And, uh, yeah, I really want to get Dennis involved. Uh, he's fought around the world too and, you know, fought in the UFC. And, um, you know, great, great guy to you know, break down some fights. And, you know, to, uh, you know, work with the best female fighter of all time. I can't wait to, you know, find out his view of her from the inside the cage and, and all that. So, you know, yeah, there's some really good guys that, uh, you know, and, uh, that we get an opportunity to watch fights with and break down fights like this. Yeah. I mean, mixed martial arts is, is awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fun sport. It's, it's, it's gotten a bad, a bad rap over the last, uh, you know, a few years, but now it's, 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 it's the fastest, isn't it the fastest growing sport in the world for a reason? I mean, yeah. and it, you know, I think it's only going to even get better now that's on ESPN, you know, and ESPN is in every household in the U S as their, you know, a sports fan, they, you know, that's what they're going to just have on the screen all day long, all the time. And, um, outside what their wife wants to watch, but, uh, you know, the big sports fans are watching ESPN and, um, you know, the, uh, the thing that you just mentioned there that brought to mind, and I, I'd like to kind of end with this, is, um, you know, uh, fighters have, have definitely uh, received a bad name. Some of them, you know, have had tough lives. Uh, most people don't get into fighting if they had a perfect life and, uh, you know, everything went super smoothly. Uh, you know, they, they've had to battle their way to build a life for themselves. And um, But one guy that um, did it the right way and was always humble and was – never a thug and never really, you know, never got into any trouble at all was George St. Pierre. And uh, I was really happy to see that Hall of Fame uh, nomination and uh, hit, they, they say he's going to be inducted soon off of 249 there. Um, tell me about George St. Pierre. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share some thoughts about him, but tell me about your thoughts about George St. Pierre and getting that honor. Well, George St. Pierre is, is just one of the best. And, you know, he, he probably is the, the greatest of all time, you know, pound for pound, probably one of the best fighters ever. I mean, you even saw him after a layoff come back and fight a guy like Michael Bisping, who's no slouch, and, and you know, have, have a dominant, dominant performance like that. It's, it's unbelievable. The guy is, you know, the, the guy is a, a, a marvel. You know, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's a he's a talented fighter. He's, you know, never had any problems you know, he helped, he helps clean up the sport. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can't say enough about George St. Pierre. I know. Yeah. And a good, good Canadian kid. Yeah. Very good <laughs> Canadian kid. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't think Felicia Spencer, you know, emerges onto the scene, uh, you know, without it. So, you know, we just saw it this past weekend, uh, you know, um, he's, she was the, the third, third Canadian to ever have an opportunity at a belt. And, uh, you know, I think we've seen, you know, so many martial artists come out of this country because of George St. Pierre. We've seen the popularity in the sport. I don't think I'd be as uh, big of a fan without George St. Pierre. And I don't think most Canadians would be able to say the thing, truthfully. Um, you know, we've had some of the biggest cards in the history of the sport. Uh, I don't know I was live at uh, Uf the UFC when he fought uh, Jake Shields and, you know, to be in that uh, Sky Dome with 50,000 fans around me, the most electric atmosphere, you know, I remember being in. And, uh, you know, Dana White's always said, you know, Canada's a hotbed for mixed martial arts. And, you know, most of us, uh, you know, follow the sport and, you know, train like you do uh, because of guys like George St. Pierre. And, you know, it's uh, a tribute to him and a tribute to our sport. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad the UFC – nominated him and said you know he should be in the hall of fame yeah absolutely i mean he he's one of the best he's he fought everybody and and you know he i'm sure he helped put uh tristar on the map which is now a really really well respected uh mixed martial arts gym with guys like faraz zahabi and uh the, you know the fighters that come out of tristar are, are phenomenal and, and george george this year helped help build this the sport to what it is and and yeah. certainly did in, the, in this country also yeah, um, I actually uh, know that we ch you mentioned John Jones, and uh, I thought this George St. Pierre would be the way to end it, but uh, tell me about John Jones, what your thoughts are, him moving up to heavyweight, fighting maybe Nagano. Um, he's 
he's saying that he's underpaid and he wants to get paid more to fight up there. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, quickly on, on, on that? Well, everyone's been wanting to see John Jones move up to uh, to heavyweight for a while, just to, just to see how he compete against some of those bigger guys. I mean, John Jones, uh, he has nothing. I don't think he has anything left to prove in in, in two hundred five. I mean, I I actually had him. I actually didn't have him winning that last fight. I I, you know, but yeah. it it was Reyes close. Was, Dominic Reyes was very impressive on that fight. Holy yeah, God. he was he was uh, awesome. But you know. He, to unseat a champion, you've got to, you've got to really, I think you really have to beat them. And, and uh, it's hard, you know, I haven't watched the fight again. So it's, it, it, sometimes it takes a couple of viewing to kind of catch stuff that, you know, I may have missed, but yeah, John Jones, I mean, he's got nothing left to prove. I think at 205 and moving up to heavyweight, I mean, I, th- I think he would long reign there as well. I mean, these, these weight cuts, he's a big guy. I mean, six foot four, cutting down to 205 is, it's probably a big cut for him, and if he didn't have to 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 worry about that cut, you know, he he would be a monster up there. Yeah, well, I would. I'd be just. I just want to see the speed, and you know, just that that uh, range that he's going to have. Uh, you know, the the speed is just going to be unbelievable. And you know, guy, you know, some of the you know guys that come in and they fight maybe two twenty, two thirty, and they. You know, these other guys are walking in 265 and stuff like that. And, you know, the power's there, but they gas it easy and they, you know, they don't have that same speed. But a guy like Jones being able to come in and, and just fight at his sort of natural weight, you know, wow, holy cow. Like, uh, I don't know why he hasn't done it sooner. Well, again, I mean, 205 is probably where he was comfortable at. and and But now he's sort of cleaned out that division and, yeah, it, it, I mean, look how well Cormier did up in uh, in heavyweight, and, and we we all saw what happened with when Jones fought Cormier. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see Jones move up. And Nagano, I mean, that, that's a that's a big challenge off the top for the guy who he, who he wants to fight. But uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone can do it, if anyone can beat him, John Jones, I think I think could do it. Nagano. Um... Uh, had some really ugly punches in that Rosen strike fight. Uh, he was flailing, but uh, when one connected, that was it. Uh, it was over real quick. Yeah, he and he's fast. He's got a lot of speed for a guy that size. So yeah, yeah he he's he's someone to watch out for for sure. Yeah, well, uh, I appreciate this, Scott. Uh, always amazing to break down fights with you and chat about uh, UFC and all these great events that we've just seen and uh, are coming up. Uh, amazing opportunity to get your get your time i know you're a busy guy you got a lot of commitments with the family and uh you know luckily this pandemic you're home so uh we can get a chance to to chat uh live here and uh yeah uh you know complete sports is is a podcast and a, a forum for talking about sports like this and you know having guys like you uh hey man this is so valuable um people are gonna love it and uh you know i, I hope we can do this again quite frequently um, let's break down a lot of fights right after they happen, uh, you know, the following days. And, uh, yeah, let's do it again. It was great. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Well, thanks very much for having me. It was, it was awesome. Uh, it's, uh, it's always fun to chat fights with you. So any, anytime. Great. Thanks so much, Scott. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call really soon. We'll talk really, really soon. And, uh, and, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's definitely look forward to some of the other events, a small event coming up this Saturday, but, uh, you know, we'll, off into the future uh, we'll, we'll do it again cheers take care man thanks so much have a good day yeah that was great uh wow holy cow um yeah you, you know you you, you got to love you got to love um you know being able to you know have a guy break down fights like that and it, it was a lot of fun i'm glad you, you guys joined me um you know i've been able to have some really good guys break down some fights recently and we're, um, you know, we're, we are um, on the cusp of, of just being able to see so many of these amazing events and, and having uh, opportunities to, to wa- watch it live and then break it down and then watch it again. Like he said, you know, he mentioned he wants to watch it two or three times. I, I always do that too, you know, but when you're watching and the commentary is on, it's hard to uh, really get a full sense of the fight, but, watching it later and watching it again and you know uh it, it gives you a different perspective and you know see things that you didn't notice before 
Um, yeah, uh, thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Uh, as I said uh, off the top here, Complete Sports is going to have a lot of great guests and a lot of uh, really good talk about all different types of sports. But today was um, focused on the UFC. I hope you love it, UFC fans. I'm going to put a description in there. Please subscribe to my channel. To please uh, find me on your podcast platforms. And uh, yeah, make me a regular part of your week. Let's uh, let's be friends. Let's uh, let's make this happen. Um, I love mixed martial arts. I love sports in general. And I really can't wait to bring so many guests to um, to the table and and you know for your viewing and and listening pleasure. Uh, we are going to have some amazing guests, and you're going to be really blown away in the next coming weeks, coming months, coming years. So uh, love you lots. Thanks so much. Bye for now. Take care.